intended for our sins and all the branch to say. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome you to another episode of the podcast for Without Spot or Blemish Ministry. So glad you're here today. Today, we're going to talk about the red flags and signs of a narcissist, Jezebel, Satanist, of their duplicity. And we're going to talk about it on a couple levels. We might address it a little bit on the personal level, some signs and red flags that Jezebels and narcissists and Satanists show uh, in terms of who they are. But mostly we're going to address it from a corporate level and, and how people in the public eye uh, show themselves for who they are through their symbols. Symbols are very important, uh, saints. We, you need to pay attention to the symbols that people show because their words will not always match up with what's really inside of them because of their duplicity, their ability to, to lie and cheat, to deceive, to pretend. So before we begin, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll delve further into this. Father God, we just praise you and thank you for your place in our lives. We need you, Father. There's so much deception out there, and there are so many people that are willing to deceive to get what they want. There's a lot of selfish people, self-centered people that have no moral compass. They, they don't have your word to guide them, to show them the way. They don't know what it is that you're trying to show them, and... They're ignoring you completely and your word, and thus they have no problem hurting other people. And so I'm just thanking you and praising you for your presence here in this message to help reveal to us how they reveal themselves, because they always do, Father God. They're like vampires. They have to be invited in, and they trick and seduce us to invite themselves in, and we're asking you to just show us those tricks, those seductions, and the means by which they reveal themselves. I thank you for making that clear to us today, Father. Father God, I've made a lot of notes, and there's a lot of things I want to say, but I'm asking you to take over. Let no flesh or my intellect run this podcast. You run this podcast and help us all to come to greater light and knowledge and and understanding of, of what the enemy is trying to do to us in this last day, in this last hour. And in Jesus' mighty name, I bind up and rebuke and command to leave me and this studio, any demonic spirit that would try to interfere with this message, that would try to put words in my mouth that are not from God, I bind that up, rebuke it, and command it to leave me. And in Jesus' mighty name, I also bind up, rebuke, and command to leave any listener, any demonic spirit that would try to distort this message or make this message something that it's not, or to try to confuse the listener. I loose that there would be the clarity of God and His Holy Spirit about us, that we would clearly hear the voice of Jesus. Jesus said that His voice we would hear and another voice we would not follow. And I'm just asking you, Father God, to just help us, help our unbelief, help us to hear your truths today. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Really so glad you're here. This topic's been on my mind all week, so I figured that I would share it. I've had some experience this week that really brought this to light. So I wanted to talk about the duplicity of the narcissist Jezebel Satanist. And duplicitous they are. What does duplicity mean? What is duplicitous? It means deceptive in words and action. Synonyms are deceitful, fraudulent, guileful. A sample sentence might be, he's not presenting different faces to different people. He's not duplicitous in that regard. So a duplicitous person would be someone that's two-faced. They're given or marked by deliberate deceptiveness in behavior or speech. There is no mistaking that Pinocchio is a duplicitous character by the length of his nose. You know, that's a Disney character. I probably shouldn't have cited that because, you know, Disney is duplicitous. They act like they're trying to help your children and they're they're exposing them to pedophilia and sexual perversion on every level. So forgive me for that cite. I got this quote about duplicity, too. This is from Charles Caleb Colton. I don't know who he is. The picture looks old. He looks like someone from the late 19th, early 20th century. But he said, Nothing more completely baffles one who is full of trick and duplicity than straightforward and simple integrity in another. So that's one reason why your narc Jez doesn't understand you. They look at you 
sideways because they can't understand why you're straightforward with them, whereas they're in a constant state of deception with you. And so I wanted to talk about the symbols of Satanists, the symbols of Jezebels, the symbols of narcissists that they that come along with them, the things that you can see when they're in the public eye that they do. And they do something that you might call sigil magic. A sigil is a symbol that is used in magic. The term has usually referred to a type of pictorial signature of a demon or other entity. In modern usage, especially in the context of chaos magic, it refers to a symbolic representation of the magician's desired outcome. So there's so much symbolism in the world today. One symbol for Satan is the lightning bolt. And so you can see here from what I have on the screen, there's lightning bolts and all of these uh, musicians here. You see Lady Gaga, see David Bowie, the Black Eyed Peas, um, of course, um, someone I cited uh, last week, lightning bolt on his satanic pulpit, and that is Marilyn Manson. You know, of course, Kiss used lightning bolts, ACDC, on and on and on and on. There's so many lightning bolts. And Black Sabbath, everyone has lightning bolts. Uh, and you will see, I'll show you further some other bands down the way, but I just wanted to, to show you why the lightning bolt represents Satan. In Luke ten eighteen, Jesus was describing Satan. He said unto his disciples, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And so since then, the lightning bolt has represented Satan. So that's just one symbol, and it's a form of sigil magic, like you see here when Lady Gaga or David Bowie painted over their eye. That's also one eye symbolism, which I'll talk about in a minute. But all of this symbolism is meant as as a magic against you, as a spell of witchcraft against you. And as long as you embrace it, you're embracing Satan, and they're telling you, they're warning you. You'll often see the lightning bolt in the all-seeing eye, uh, the Nazi SS was basically two lightning bolt symbols. So you can see just from last week, my cover of my Narcissist Jezebels and Their Music podcast that I did, you can see that I had featured Marilyn Manson with his symbol, of course, his, his satanic symbol within a circle, uh, the, the, the lightning bolt. And then, of course, he's got, I don't know if you can see, but there's several crosses also with him on stage and the red motif. You can also see that same motif if you look to the picture on the right of, uh, that's uh, Chris Tomlin there with a cross with a red motif. You could see in the middle, that's Jesus culture and that red motif. And she'll often stand with her arms extended out like a cross. And notice how they're all wearing black. Their shirts are black and red. Black and red is also a satanic motif, and you'll see them constantly, whether or not secular or the so-called Christian music, which is not Christian music. You can see further details about that in my past uh, broadcast, but in this particular broadcast, I'm not going to delve into that as deep. I'm just showing you the symbolism that they're coming with words in their mouths, that is the Christian ones, that pretend pretend or portend to represent Christ, but they're showing you by their garb, by their symbols on stage, that this is not so. So, for example, with the cross, if you look with me at the second commandment, Exodus 20, verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any, any at all, any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that includes angels and Jesus and your perception of God, or that is in the earth beneath, which a cross was in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So it's forbidden for us to, to make these crosses, to make these graven images, because what happens is people use them in worship. I've also done an entire message on that. The only reason I'm delving into that again superficially is because I'm just trying to show you that if you go back and look at that screenshot I have from last week, that cross on the stage is representing something satanic for Chris Tomlin there, especially in the red motif. Now, I know his album was something called something like Blood Ran Down or whatever, which you will say is an allusion to Jesus shedding his blood on the cross. But the cross itself up there in a graven image situation is forbidden by God. 
And that's why if you look on Marilyn Manson, who's a Satanist, he has no problem displaying crosses on his stage either. If it was really something that was represented Christ that had power to cast demons out as is represented in, in Catholic movies or movies represent, showing Catholic so-called exorcism, if there was really power in this graven image, which God has forbidden, which doesn't make sense, how on earth could a Satanist like Marilyn Manson have them on a stage? So I'm just trying to show you how symbols, including ones that are traditionally Christian, are not of God because he has forbidden them. So as you go deeper into the idea of sigil magic and of symbols used as in, in sigil magic, you can come across um, lots of information of the symbols used in Freemasonry. And one of those is the, the six-pointed star, which has an as above, so below symbolism to it. It's actually two triangles, one pointing up and one pointing down. So you can see here from free this is from Freemasonry and Esoterica. It's a blog describing as above, as above, so below. It says as above, so below is the esoteric meaning of the symbol. The hexagram is comprised of both a downward and upward triangle. The downward triangle represents heaven or the higher power. The upward triangle in the is the earthly triangle, which represents man and the physical plane. Together, the symbol represents as above, so below. But this is really occultic in origin. So one of the most utilized occultic symbols is the triangle. A triangle with its point downward represents the deity and is called the deity's triangle or the water triangle. With one point up, it is called the earthly triangle, the pyramid triangle, or the fire triangle. So the hexagram, if you look below, is also a symbol of the sex act and reproduction Masonic author Albert G. Mackey provides us with the occult explanation in his book, The Symbolism of Freemasonry. Masonry, he says, the triangle pointing downward is a female symbol corresponding to the yoni, and the upward pointing triangle is the male, the lingam. When the two triangles are interfaced, excuse me, interlaced, it represents the union of the active and passive forces in nature. It, is, it represents the male and female elements. So, if this has not become evident to you, the occultists, the paganists, they worship sex. They also worship everything in nature, which fulfills the biblical definition of paganist in Romans 125, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. So you can, you can see more about this on this page I'm showing you now, but you can see it represented in the Baphomet. So if you look at this image I'm showing you now, on the left you can see the Baphomet with the goat's head and the the unisex uh, physical body that has breasts, but it's also a male. And then you can see up out of the pants come the the double uh, serpent around the the rod, and you can see one hand pointing up and one hand pointing down. And you can see above there's a, a crescent moon that's a light. It's in it's in, it's light, and there's a crescent moon below that's dark. Now, if you want to talk about our symbolism as a nation, most people want to say we are founded on Christian principles. This image on the right, that is of George Washington, and that's a statue that's in Washington, D.C. He's in the same pose, pointing up with the right hand and the left hand down. And it is communicating to us that George Washington was a 33rd degree Mason, and he was not the Christian everybody makes him out to be. And that's why someone like Alex Jones is troubling to me because he's constantly citing the founders as being these Christian men and they weren't. You know, maybe some of them were, but George Washington certainly wasn't. He was a 33rd degree Mason and he had to go way down the rabbit trail to get to where he got. So now you could see this page where I just uh, did a quick search on Masonic, Freemasonic free imagery. And you can see with their square and compass that shows the same as above, so below symmetry and symbolism. Um, lots of other things that uh, Masons do. You can see in one of the images, the checkerboard flooring. You'll see a lot of uh, modern Masons uh, use that. Uh, the two pillars, they're often used in Masonry and their symbolism. And you'll see that throughout uh, the modern Illuminati, if that's what you want to call it. Um, Representations in art, music, uh, 
any kind of media, they're often using it. Another big thing they use is the all-seeing eye. On this particular image, if you notice, uh, at the top of it, you can see the all-seeing eye in a sun. And of course, there's the back of the dollar bill, which I'll show you later, that has the pyramid structure, which is also somewhat shaped like uh, the, the compass item here. It's all about, about as above, so below. And, and when they say that, they mean they want Satan's will, not God's will. Because you know in the prayer for Jesus, Jesus said, the, the Lord's Prayer, he said, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is a reversal, a twisting of this, where the will of Satan is what they want done rather than the will of God. Now getting back to the all-seeing eye, you can see this Egyptian-looking eye here. This represents the all-seeing eye of Horus, or Satan, if you will. And uh, one company that obviously had that symbol, along with something that could also form three sixes, is Time Warner Cable, which has now been bought by Spectrum. But their symbol was an all-seeing eye. And they're basically telling you that through their cable systems, they're watching you. And the more connected we are, the more able they are to watch us, the all-seeing eye. They're telling us, they're warning us. They can't do stuff to us without warning us. So now I kind of want to shift gears a little bit. I was going to talk a little bit more about the pyramid as a shape, but I'm going to go on to another subject. I want to show you a communication I had with someone on my on my website. So you can see here, uh, this avatar here belonged to this particular person. I won't say their name, but they commented in on one of my videos. They, they started to pray. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we bind every single demon and spirit of Jezebel and those legions from operating in our lives and the lives of those we lift up to you now and command. And I actually had deleted it. So this I, I, I got this from my from my notification, so I don't have the rest of the prayer, but the prayer was a pretty good spiritual warfare prayer. And I said in response, nice prayer, but what's with a demonic avatar? Because that avatar is really demonic, and I'll show you that. Their response was, hi there, I was surprised by your response to the prayer I offered. I've never before been accused of having a devilish or demonic avatar before. That's really surprising to me based on what I'm about to show you. Your perception of it amazes me. So they're amazed. I must be wrong. That doesn't look demonic or scary or anything. He says the demonic fear, he or she, I don't know which gender. The demonic fears me Demonic fears me, because of whom I walk and work with in absolute faith. After that prayer, I must admit, I feel your comment to be highly inappropriate. Makes me remember when Jesus was accused of working with devils after he had cast one out. He said, a house divided cannot stand. I find it curious why you would choose to demonize me after that prayer. Really? So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, this avatar is so clearly demonic. What am I missing? How could this person that serves God put up an image such as that and, and act surprised that I would be surprised by it? So... It was shocking. So I actually sent the person back so many uh, related images. You could see up here on the left, their avatar, the upper left-hand corner. But these images, several of them come from Hinduism. I think it's Vishnu. You could see the red eyes, the red eyes. And then can you see on his avatar, his or her avatar that was sent to me, the swirl right above the eye? That represents the all-seeing eye, and you could see it in some of these other images with, with the really blue face with the all-seeing eye in the middle. That is definitely something from a, a Hindu god, I believe, called Vishnu. And you can also see this greenish complexion of the avatar of this person that was defending it is got this hue, this bluish greenish complexion. You can see it in the, the demonic eyes here in the bottom middle. I also thought that that mouth, that, that slit for a mouth and a very, very rigid mouth reminded me a little bit of those Hawaiian idols, those tiki idols. And of course, the red eyes, they look completely demonic. So there's just everything about this represents a demon beyond a shadow of a doubt. And we argued back and forth. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. And then I... And then I was like, you must be a shell. I can't believe you're, you're doing this. And of course, he, he, said he, he or she said that she was sussing me out, that I was, I was the one that needed examination. 
and yet they're, they're so bold in their duplicity. They will literally come at you and lie right through their teeth. To say that's not demonic is an absolute lie. There's no way around it. You can't, you can't be a d- deliverance practicing person and not recognize that. It's just beyond the pale. And so the only thing I can think is this is a duplicitous person. There's no way that they would do this. There's no way they would use an avatar like that with those fearful red eyes and with the, the all-seeing swirly in the middle of the forehead and, and not be able to receive correction about it and, and recognize that this is wrong. So, you know, Jesus said uh, that there would be many people that would cast out demons in his name, and he would say, I never knew you. And so this person's claiming, well, since I said this really amazing prayer to cast out demons, you must believe me. No, I need to believe you by all your fruit. I don't trust a person that would put up an avatar like that. It's ridiculous. I can't even believe you would ask me to. And that's something that a narcissist would do. They'd get, they'd get you alone and try to convince you to believe something is good that's really bad. But woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Woe unto them. And that's what this person right here is. And there's more to it than just that, but I'm going to let it stop there because if I if I did any more, I'd have to identify the person. And I'm trying not to throw people under the bus too much. But even so, the person did not change their avatar after the conversation. And, and they must be holding on to it because they have to tell us on the one hand, it's like those vampires have to tell you who they are. And I'm telling you, narcissist Jezebels give you all kinds of red flags not just with their symbolism, but with their, they'll say one thing and then they'll say something that contradicts it. And you're constantly in the state of confusion by these people, which brings me to my next one. I was in Be Good 4000's video. He did the video. He actually cited um, a woman that did a video on um, women that use social media, I think. And so James was basically agreeing with her about it. And so one of the posts that came back, a comment said, James, you're talking about the trampy type of woman who narcissistically posts constant photos of herself with cleavage, etc. We aren't all like that. I have never, nor will I have ever have Instagram. Same with the Snapchat. The only social media I have is Facebook, which I never post to except for rare occasions, such as posting which Hurricane Harvey charities donate 100% of your money directly to people in need. Sadly, a lot of men only go after the slutty Jezebel type of women who dress extremely provocatively, and then they are shocked when these Jezebels turn out to be a Jezebel. And so I'm sitting there, okay, that makes sense. And then I'm looking at her avatar, which I can barely see. You know, it's really small. Uh, And I press on it, and it takes me to her page, and then I can expand it and see it more and it's literally a picture of like a someone a woman from the 50s a Marilyn Monroe type which you can see here she's got a spaghetti strap coming down to hold a a a, a complete like boob accentuating and just spilling out with cleave plenty of cleavage which she had commented on and then her her dress is pulled all the way up where you could see her her, her stockings all the way to the top and almost her to her buttocks. And this woman just said, I never, I never post to, you know, constant photos of herself with cleavage and stuff, but this may not be her. This is obviously, you know, an artist rendition of a slutty woman from the fifties, but nevertheless, so I commented back to this person what about your avatar? Seems like a slutty pic of a Marilyn Monroe type complete with spaghetti strap top showing boob and cleavage as well as short skirt showing the tops of her pantyhose. And then Be Good 4000 says bingo. And it's just the hypocrisy of it, the deception of it. I mean, how how could a Christian woman put that image up and pretend that she's a Christian? And I can't really see the right hand of the woman but I think it's actually devil horns. If her pinky's out, which it might not be, maybe it's not. Yeah, the pinky's up and the index finger's up. The woman in the picture is making devil horns. <laughs> These people. So I made the comment, there was never a reply from the person. Not, not, not going to be a reply. So that right there, she's talking out of her mouth like she's doing... Like she's a moral, high grounded person. Take the high ground person that doesn't do stuff like that. And then her avatar says something completely different. 
Symbolism, my friend, symbolism. That tells you what's really behind a person. This person is a slutty whore. At least her avatar represents her as such, but she talks otherwise. She's trying to use a seductive picture to get men to lust and women because, I mean, everybody's lusting after everybody these days. And yet she says a completely different thing in her comment. I, I, the hypocrisy. It's like when you see this stuff, you know, usually I, I see it, I notice it, and I just gloss over it. And I don't talk about it. And that's part of their magic on you. They get you to kind of believe their words. But meanwhile, they're conducting a spell on you with other things to get you to go into sin. Like in this case, be drawn into sin uh, to lust after this image or the person before to be drawn into fear of that person based on those red eyeballs and the, that that demonic I, idolatry. I, I mean, the demonic, demonic idol that he puts in his, he or she puts in the avatar. It's such hypocrisy. And so now I want to take you to another very public person, and that's Bono of you too. And I want you to hear his testimony. I want you to hear his words. If he doesn't sound like a Christian, I don't know who does. But let's go ahead and take a listen, and then I'll comment on it. Look to the scriptures for poetic truth, um, as well as the sort of historical stuff I'm, I'm, I'm in, interested in. And of course, there was a history historical Jesus. No, I'm talking about God. Oh, right. And, and do well, you... I see. I'm the, per the person of Christ is my way to understand uh, God. Do you pray? Yes. To whom or what do you pray? To and Christ. Way? To Christ. Yeah. And, and what do you pray for? I pray to get to know um, <laughs> the will of God, because then the prayers have more chance of coming through. I mean, that's the thing about prayer, isn't it? I mean, we don't do it in a very lofty way in our family. It's just a bunch of us on the bed, usually. We have a very big bed in our house. And all our, we've prayed with all our kids. We, we you know, we just, we, we read the scriptures, we pray. It's not even regular. Sometimes if we go to church on a Sunday, we go when the church has ended, and we'll just go in on our own as a family. For peace and quiet. For peace and quiet. And we'll pray, usually about people that we know who are struggling with something, um, illness so, so, or so whatever. So what or who was Jesus as far as you're concerned? I think it's, the, it's a defining question for a Christian, is who was Christ. And, and I don't think you're let off easily by saying a great thinker or a great philosopher or, a, you know, because actually he went round saying he was the Messiah. That's why he was crucified. He was crucified because he said he was the Son of God. So he either, in my view, was the Son of God or he was not. No, no, nuts. Nuts, yes. Forget yes. rock and roll messianic complexes. This is like, I mean, Charlie Manson type delirium. And I find it hard to accept that all the millions and millions of lives, half the earth for 2,000 years, have been touched, have felt their lives touched and inspired by some nutter. I just, I don't believe it. I, I so think therefore it follows that you believe he was divine. Yes. And therefore it follows that you believe that he rose physically from the dead. Yes, yeah, I mean, uh, I have no problem with miracles. <laughs> I'm living around them. I am one. So, so when you pray, then you pray to Jesus. Yes. The risen Jesus. Yes. And you believe that He made promises which will come true. Yes. Okay, there it is. Bono is a Christian. I mean, that was a great testimony. I mean, aside from going to church on Sunday. He said Jesus was divine, the risen Son of God. He prays to Christ. Now, let's look at some of these images here and see how he represents himself in the world. Boom. First image as his Mephisto character with devil's horns. Two, pointing devil horns up on his head in a concert. Three, in another concert, flashing the devil horn hand sign. Four, an image with him doing the circle with the 666 over his eye. Five, same thing, different time. Six, putting his hand over his eye to show one eye, the all-seeing eye of Horus. Satanism is demonic. 
How does a believer in Jesus Christ say he believes in Jesus Christ and then do this? He's showing us what's really in his heart by his symbolism. And he's in fact conducting magic against you. Every time he puts up one of those hand signs, those symbols, sigil magic. And it's sigil magic is meant to have an effect. And that is to lure you into Satanism. And the reason why Bono is presented so much as a Christian is because since the beginning in his music, he's been the one to try to be used to turn us, that is Christians, to Satan by degrees. So he gets us to sing to Jesus, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. He gets us to sing songs that are Helter Skelter, the cover of the Beatles song, or uh, you know, all sorts of songs about sin and drug use and everything else. I mean, it's he is the stepping stone away from God to Satan through music. And it's so clear. You could go on, you could research him yourself. I'm not going to spend all the time because this, this, this episode is not just about music. But it's just my point to you is that people show you who they are through their symbolism. So let's go to another band, Pearl Jam, which is a very popular band. And you can see these are three of their album covers here on the top. And you see this one, No Code. It's got the the triangle, which represents the pyramid with the circle in the middle, the all-seeing eye. The second one has something interesting. But wait, before we go to the second one, you can see on the back of the dollar bill, the pyramid, all-seeing eye. This is all a demonic Freemasonry Illuminati symbolism. The second album, I can't see the name of it. I, You know, I, I don't binaural I think it says but you could see there's a vesica Pisces the two circles with an eye in the middle of it a vesica Pisces not to get too grotesque represents the female genitalia where the two cross in the middle and it makes that that uh, oval type shape in the middle where the eyeball is so that right there is a satanic symbol you can also see it used with this is a picture of the Washington Monument and which is, of course, just like an Egyptian ob obelisk. It is an obelisk. An obelisk represents an erect phallus. You could see it's coming through a vesica Pisces, which represents the female organ. You see how sick this stuff is? You go and visit something like this as a kid. You have no idea that you're at a sexual sigil magic monument that's satanic in origin. And then, of course, the most recent album that Pearl Jam did called Lightning Bolt. There's the all-seeing eye with a lightning bolt in the middle of it, two other lightning bolts on the side, and there's an upside-down cross. If you look at the at the little T symbol where the middle line is lower than the top, you can kind of see it's not really right in the middle. It's a little lower. The upside-down cross, of course, also represents Satanism. And I just put an all-seeing eye there just to remind you of where the, the sources of that these people are telling you who they are. You could see them in interviews and they sound Eddie Vedder. He sounds really nice and he's a real liberal. So you liberals love him and he is a Satanist and he is drawing you into Satanism. Here's Joe Rogan. He's a guy that's been a comedian for a long time. He says a lot of things that are somewhat conservative. He's got a really popular podcast now. He's been on uh sitcoms what was that radio something radio i can't remember the, the the whole name of it but he was on a pretty popular sitcom you know of course he does uh, the announcing for the mma the mixed martial arts fighting that that conor mcgregor guys in so i mean this guy's all over the place he is extremely popular and this is the i w was watching one of his podcasts and this was what came up the very first thing the Joe Rogan experience, there's two lightning bolts, one on each side, and the all-seeing eye in his forehead, and that silly look on his face, you know. So, I mean, I don't know if he's trying to play a game with all that, but why would you do that? It's just, it's ridiculous. So, we've kind of been talking about people in the entertainment realm. We left off talking about those two commenters, which were ridiculous. W witches, if you ask me, they're conducting witchcraft. They're trying to gaslight us, basically. Then we went on to back to some musicians. Now let's go into some politicians. So here you could see we've got Donald Trump and Hillary, you know, flashing sigil magic with the uh, devil horned hand sign. Of course, that's Trump with Jesse James. That's not just rock and roll, everybody. That is a sigil magic hand sign. 
Of course, Trump is constantly flashing the 666 hand symbol. That was one reason why I knew he was not going to amount to much in terms of doing what he said. And he's done nothing that he said he would do. And he's just an Illuminati shell, just like everybody else. You could see him with a downward pointing triangle hand that you could see the so below symbolism. And you could see that satanic priest looking guy with the, with the hood on forming that same hand symbol. These people are telling us who they are. They say one thing out of their mouths and they do another. It's duplicity. Let's go on to the Bushes. You know, I remember when I was a very young Christian was when Bush came on board and he was, you know, there's a lot of images of him in church. Here's one of him and Laura in church, you know, bowing. It looks like they're in an African church here and they're bowing and they look like they're praying to God. And then you could see this black and white photo is skull and bones. You can see the two men sitting cross-legged uh, by the table, you see that skull right there? That's a human skull on the table. And then, of course, on the actual tablecloth, you see the skull and bones. This is a secret society at Yale University, one of our Ivy League schools in this nation that actually, probably like all the others, started off as a divinity slash seminary school, and now it's completely turned over to Satan. And so... You could see him in that. He's been a Satanist all along. You could see him in this picture of the Minijad, Amadinajad, excuse me. You can see this picture of them both flashing the devil horns, doing the same sigil magic to their people, yet they act like en enemies. They're all on the same side. They're all creating uh, chaos so they can bring their own order out of chaos. This is all being, it's all done on purpose. More of him flashing his symbols. These people, they're wicked. And so now I'm going to take you into the Christian world and I'm going to show you some symbolism uh, that shows that these people, some of your favorite bands, Christian bands, have demonic symbolism in their art. So casting crowns, a lot of people love casting crowns. Are they really casting their crowns before Christ? Is it really about Jesus Christ? If it is, first of all, why are they celebrating Christmas? Christmas itself is a, full of satanic symbolism, and I've done a whole video on that. Don't have time to delve so deeply, but you can go watch my very first video. It's about Christmas and all of its demonic symbolism and how Jesus couldn't have been born in the winter. It's all based on uh, winter solstice, uh, war, uh, pagan worship. None of it is of God, and yet we've got all of these very famous, very wealthy Christian bands, and they all make Chris Christmas albums. And look at that cross and the casting crowns thing. A little more sigil magic right there. And their peace on earth. They've got a one, two, three, four, five, six pointed star. What does that remind you of? The six pointed star of as above, so below. And a very stormy, cloudy, cloudy uh, sky along with a desert scene. Desert means dry places where, where demons reside. Then I know some of you are thinking, oh, Doug, have you, how can you take it that far? Casting crowns, no way. All right, well, look at this tree symbolism, as above, so below. Look at that, the black and white one I have on the upper right. Now look at the casting crowns one. Same thing, as above, so below. Switchfoot, same thing, as above, so below. These people... And I could go into their lyrics and show you how their lyrics are all sketchy, but that's not what this message is about. You can do that yourself. This message is about them telling you what they're really about. They are telling you what they're really about. And now onto everyone's, you know, idol. You guys really worship this guy. Not probably not my listenership, but many people do. Every time I hear him, I honestly think he sounds like a homosexual when he sings. I really, really do. So look at these uh, album covers for Chris Tomlin. Their album covers are such a good place to, to see what they're up to. So if you look at this first one, you can see hands up into the air. That makes sense. Hold your hands up to, to God. Can't argue with that. But why is that one eye completely darkened out? Close to the side is right eye. The left eye is the only one you see. Why is that? Why do they do that in almost every secular movie and secular music album? Block off an eye. Why do they do that? Now look at this one. Here's here's Chris Tomlin's Christmas one. Now, which again, obviously you know how I feel about Christmas. It's completely demonic. 
some people, I guess, could be in their walk where they don't understand that yet. But at some point, you need to kind of get on board with the truth about it being completely pagan. But let's look at his album. Again, one eye only showing. And then let's look at this uh, nativity scene, as it were. There is a triangular shaped rooftop, which isn't unusual. I know you're thinking, man, you're really pushing it now. You're just making stuff up. But why would that star be through it? If you think about that star that's just under the triangular roof, why would that be there instead of atop of it? Because if you think about it, that's that star is way off on the horizon. The, if, if the wise men were searching for Jesus, they would be off several, what, thousand miles away <laughs> to get to that star where it is at that point. You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense that it would be inside of it. But it does make sense if this is all-seeing eye uh, pyramid symbol symbolism. Do you see what I'm saying? There's just too many things going on here. Again, I'm talking about symbolism. I can show you in some of his songs because I had to, I've led praise and worship where I had to sing some of his songs. I would change words when I did it. And then even then I didn't feel good about it. I felt so filthy after singing this man's songs. And Matt Redman too. There's always stuff about the sun in, in their songs. Have you noticed that? It's always stuff about, not every song, but a lot of their most famous songs. The sun is always in it. And that links to sun worship which is paganism, which goes back to Baal worship. It all ties in. It's all demonic. Now, this Good Good Father tour, tour poster, there's this cloud, this dark cloud represented again above his head, and then also the darkened side of his face. Why is that? Why is the lighting not right? Or how great is our God? Same thing. He's looking down. You can't really see either eye, but one side of his face is darkened tell me over and over again they do the same thing how is that not the all-seeing eye motif how is it not they do the same thing on secular albums all right so now we come to my favorite jesus culture i've gotten so much flack for covering these people because people that love them boy do you guys ever worship them just worship them First thing that I saw on them, you know, five or six years ago was the little J in Jesus culture. Is that a diminishing of Jesus? I mean, I know the motif is this, and then there's a cross there, demonic. But the motif is with the Jesus culture is the all lowercase is kind of representative, of, you know, using a dot .com name. You don't need to capitalize anything. You just type it all in. How can you do that to Jesus? This is the Son of God. Why would you diminish his letter? That's what got me at first. I know the art, what the art was trying to do, but it got me, but I still wasn't completely turned off by that until I heard their music. And then they did that, the repetitions of 144 times, fill me up, God. I want to say something about that I've never said because it's so vulgar. But fill me up, God. If you think of it on a sexual level, level, I'm just not going to say anymore. With a woman singing it, think about it. That's what it comes across to me. It's sexual. It's perverted. It's demonic. I believe it's asking Satan to fill her up. And, and I know some of you listeners are like, this is crazy. He's crazy. Well, let's look at their symbolism. Jesus Culture Reconstructed Volume 1. All right, what do we have? Yet another pyramid. The Upward Pointing Triangle. Then let's look around it. Look how there are lines, one line longer than the other. Six, then this way would make a six, then this way would make a six. It's making a six, six, six. The fourth corner has a short line. Six, six, six around the triangle. You could say, oh, Doug, you're just reading into it too deeply. You don't need to do that. All right. Let's look at this um, Kingdom Come Tour with Brian and Katie Torwalt. This is Jesus Culture is presenting them. They're standing in front of a pyramid. There's a pyramid there. And look at the Jesus Culture circle right next to it, the, the symbol, Jesus Culture. If you look above it, you can see an unstoppable love. Jesus Culture. Look at that symbol. What does that make? Yet another all-seeing eye. So they got the all-seeing eye and the upward part of a pyramid. There's a pyramid pointing up. 
I don't know if you noticed, but there's a lighter triangular shape at the top pointing down. As above, so below. Look at your look at your right. This is Nicholson 1968 has done a huge extra, uh, huge thing on this. You can see in this um, Britney Spears ad, as above, so below, mirror image. She's got the black hair above, the blonde, I mean black hair below, the blonde above. Mirror image just like this one in the middle. Now look at the as above, so below symbolism in this Still Believe album in the upper right. You could see they're using the lights to create it. So you got an upward triangle on the middle light, but then look how the two, the two lights on the left and right make a downward pointing triangle. As above, so below, and there's even the spotlight at the top is accentuated to be the all seeing eye. People, it just, maybe if it happened once, it happens every album. They're telling you, Chris Tomlin is telling you, Jesus, walk, Jesus culture is telling you, they're warning you and you still buy it. And that's what these narcissists have done to you too. Those of us that have been fooled, they told us so many things with their mouths, but their, what was spiritually inside of them did not reflect what they were saying in the least, in the least. So we've got to figure out a way to be more discerning and to not accept this manipulation. I mean, look at the Skillet album with the with the eye coming out of this, the, the face all wrapped up. Look at the Lecrae album. These people are telling you they are not Christians. Toby Mac, he's not a Christian. Third Day, they're not Christians. They're making millions off of you and tricking you. All of these people are making millions of dollars off of people by saying something with their mouth and being something completely different behind the scenes. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not taking it from those commenters. I'm calling these people out, I'm calling you out. You're not fooling me anymore. I'm not accepting it. And I'm saying to you, stop accepting it. Another person that I feel has done this, I've listened to, I love talk radio. That's why I like to make podcasts. That's why you don't see my face. I think of this like a radio show. I prefer it that way. That way I have some anonymity, not that I'm famous or anything, but I just, I'd rather just walk around life normal. So, but, but, but Alex Jones was, you know, part of the quote truther movement. So you listen to him a lot and then he'll play in his bumper music, um, Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan. He'll have all this wicked evil, the, the cult, the cult, which is completely satanic. They'll play all of this satanic bumper music and you're supposed to believe he's a good Christian. And he'll say, I, I love Jesus. He'll say it time and time again. And yet he's playing this Illuminati music. They'll even ad identify modern Illuminati music, but he's playing all the Illuminati music from old. I don't trust him. That's why I don't buy any of his products because what an amazing way to hoodwink people into buying all this so-called stuff good for your health and at any moment, if he's if he's a member of the Illuminati and he's actually you know a shill, he could just poison everybody. I know that sounds like it's crazy, but he could. He could get a lot of people that are wanting to serve God or live for truth. He could get them. I don't buy his products. I don't. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I don't trust everything he says. He's still uh, on the Trump bandwagon. He should have been the one to identify all of Trump's hand gestures and symbols that he's been throwing up left and right. They're, they're, these things are their gang signs. They are their gang signs. These people are part of Satan's gang and they throw their signs so that the people that know them, people that are part of the group know who they are. That's why, that's why Trump was constantly throwing the sign. He wanted to know all the people to know that were in the, in their system that he wasn't betraying them. He was acting as a deceiver. These people are all deceivers, all of them. Obama, if you're a liberal listening, you think I'm bashing the, the conservatives. The, the liberals to me are far worse because they outwardly promote abortion and baby murders. So if, if you can vote for a Democrat and support that part of the platform, you're a narcissist, you're, you're a Jezebel, you're a baby murdering pagan, if you can do that. So 
please don't get me wrong. I'm, I dog the conservatives on this thing, but I dog them because they're the ones that represent themselves as Christians. You don't see Hillary and Obama, you know, they'll fake it a little bit to some degree, but it's pretty obvious they're not. At least it's more honest that way, but they're they're murderers and Satanists nonetheless. So take what I'm showing you, what these people show you, and, and start to really read the signs in advance. For example, let's say you're a single male and you meet a girl and she seems really sweet, but she's got that skirt hiked up and that and that top really low. But she seems like she's perfect. She's just a little bit scantily clad all the time. And maybe she's had a little little work done, if you know what I'm saying. Don't don't buy it. Only buy it if these people repent of these things. Like for example, if Bono came out and said out loud, I have done this and this and this to hurt the kingdom of God. I repent for it. And then made that confession that he made of his belief in Christ. Then I'm buying it. But he he needs to come out and admit to all the satanic garbage he's done in the last, you know, since 1980. So we're talking nearly 40 years of being a superstar. He's done all the satanic garbage. He needs to come out and repent for it. Chris Tomlin, if he repents and tells us the truth about what he's been up to, I would believe it and support him and, and encourage him to continue singing for the Lord. Or, or, or Kim Walker Smith of, uh, of Jesus Culture, you know, of all these people. You know, but there's no outward repentance and there's a continuation of the behavior. While they say one thing out of their mouth, they continue the other behavior that's contradictory to God's work word and in complete support of evil. It's evil. It's evil. People, I'm telling you, this is all, It's it's got to stop. And we as Christians, our discernment level has got to be there. And one way to uh, char and numb your discernment is just to live in sin and i'm talking to myself too it's you know peter talks about the sins that so easily besets us it's easy to fall in the flesh we have got to be on our p's and q's if we want to discern what's going on or else we're just going to be part of their kingdom when we sin we're agreeing with satan and we're stepping taking a step into his world you got to step out of his world to be able to see his world coming at you if you want to get better clarity and better discernment step out of what that world is and start to truly love God and serve him talking to myself talking to myself this world is only getting darker and they're only getting more in our face with with this garbage and so you're going to need discernment in these end times just to stay safe you're going to need to spot people coming a mile away now that doesn't mean to have wrong discernment and and be overly sensitive to people that are decent people and avoid helping people that need help because they're not where you are in their walk. You got to be careful about that. But on the other hand, you got to see deceivers coming a mile away if you want to avoid them and serve God and bring as many as possible into the kingdom. So I think I'm going to wrap up with that. Father God, I just praise you and thank you for being in this message today. I thank you and praise you for giving us this word. I thank you for correcting me. I need correction. I need to walk a holy walk. I've been watching a lot of videos, Father God, about people that went to hell. And there were a lot of people there that they saw that were milk toast, milk, uh, lukewarm Christians that were just giving you lip service. There's a lot down there. I know it's true. I don't care if you think that they just had a dream. I, I know there's a lot of people in hell that claim to be Christians. And I'm asking you, Father God, to help me, help all the listeners, help us all to walk in righteousness before you and in purity of heart and to be cleansed of darkness and to not fall for the traps and the seductions of the enemy and to identify these red flags that they keep showing us over and over again, whereby we won't be tripped up by their demonic symbolism by their demonic sigil magic and right now in Jesus' mighty name i bind up and rebuke every demon that's used these people to come at us with sigil magic i refuse to accept it for myself and for anyone else listening that wants to refuse it i just pray after me father god in Jesus' mighty name i bind up and rebuke the effects and the demonic spirits that have come up against me through any kind of sigil magic or witchcraft spells 
being conducted against me by these people who are duplicitous and live for Satan, but talk differently out of their mouths. I'm asking you, Father God, to just bring me into complete, to be completely clean of this. And I just loose a complete cleansing of me. I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm talking too fast. I plead the blood of Jesus all over me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I return to the demonic sender any witchcraft spell that's been placed on me through symbols, through magic, and through witchcraft. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. People, you need to consider how much TV you're imbibing. They are, they are programming you. It's called TV programming for a reason. And there is so much magic. That's another thing I want to mention about the beginning of a lot of pot, of a lot of um, videos. People are using like these little flashing lights. For example, I see it all the time on the Alex Jones uh, Infowars. They'll do a quick flashing light. That's hypnotic. And you need to avoid that stuff. You need to avoid the sigil magic that's being thrown at you time after time after time. If you watch uh, one of those music shows like The Voice or uh, what's the other one? American Idol. I think it went off the air, but it's coming back. They were throwing magic at you left and right with symbolism. If you go back and look at it again, you'll see it. You know, uh, pyramid and triangle uh structures using lights using all kinds of things everything almost is was satanic magic being done against you all of the grammys and the oscars all of these shows sigil magic all of the the super large sporting sporting events like the super bowl sigil magic being conducted to you left and right with those musicians whether it was madonna beyonce coldplay lady gaga they all threw so much magic at you not only through the music but through the symbolism that you were being bombarded with it and it's a wonder it's no wonder that all of society is just walking in lockstep and ready to receive the mark of the beast when it comes because that's what all of this is about. It's meant to program you to receive the mark. You need to get clear of it. You need to stop watching these events. Stop watching so much TV. Get rid of the television programming. I mean, I watch mostly YouTube, but you got to be careful on YouTube too. I mean, there's definitely magic being conducted against us. So pay attention to that. And pray, stay prayed up and do your spiritual warfare and you'll be fine. God, God's with you and he'll protect you. But pay attention to what you're taking in and try to be in the word more. Try to take in God's word more as a defense. You know, the word of God is the bread of life. And if you feed on it, it's going to feed your spirit, man. And you're going to be strong. Read the word. Live for Jesus Christ. Try to walk with him every day. Talk to him every day. He's with you all the time. He wants to hear from you. Make him your first and foremost. And don't be all about the earthly blessing. Earthly blessings are great, but be more about the relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing him and your love affair with him. All right? Okay, so this is where we'll bring it to an end. Father God, I just praise you and thank you for this message. Bless all who listened and, and received it and help us to be ever more mindful of what the enemy's trying to do to us. And I just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Subscribe, like or dislike, um, share, you know, share these. I know you guys already share these messages a lot, but you know, if this message touched you, share it with somebody and uh, let them get mad at me, you know, <laughs> they'll probably get mad at you too, but uh, I don't care if they're mad at me. So, but you know, their blood won't be on your hands. People, we don't need to be going to hell. We need to be walking right with, with Jesus Christ and knowing Him so that when we stand before Him, He can say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Be blessed all.
Father's love given to all when for us his son would take the fall a father's grief when we won't receive the selfless plan that saves and makes complete Extended for our sins And all the branch to say That you're forgiven Accept the gift Of this unending love And believe on him Who was sent from above His name is Jesus, Savior of